Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan. Welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith, we're going to be making this the spring bow. So this was intended to be a little bit of fun. It's a toy that shoots ball bearings. Now I made pretty much all of this, except from a couple of nuts and bolts I, and the springs, obviously. I have made everything on here and I'll be showing you how I've done that in this episode. Even though this was intended to be a toy, the results have been pretty awesome. I wasn't even sure if it was gonna work at the start of this project. So, um, at the end of the video, I'd like to talk about some of the things that I'd like to do to improve it both aesthetically and performance wise, but I'd also like some help, some advice, and some, uh, some general input and feedback from you guys and girls at home as to what else I could do to improve the spring bow. Yeah, flip it over. Okay, so I assembled it the way I thought I needed to assemble it with the springs in their most relaxed position. And that logically doesn't make any sense because they don't have any power when they're at their shortest distance. So they need a bit of tension on them to get some of the power out of them. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut this off and put it up here, I think. Now, some of the other problems that we're now having is that this back arm's bent because we're using four springs not two i might try this demo with two and then see how we get anyway um but we need to be able to draw the springs as long as possible and we've worked out that we should can draw them up to 400 mil so 400 what's 400 mil so it's over a foot and a half so we've got a foot and a half of draw length that we can get out of these springs so what i'm going to do i'm going to chop this off of here or cut it off of here and put it on the end. I think we need to beef this up a little bit because it's starting to bend, which is a little bit irritating. 
Uh, and then this back arm needs beefing up as well and also get bringing away from the back of the the barrel plunger plunger um, yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to test fire it I'm, I was using the ball bearings but these are heavier they don't go as far and they're easier to find <laughs> so because I don't want to lose too many ball bearings yet once it's all together I'll go nuts but um, yeah so I'm going to fire this and see how well, basically see what it looks like when it's coming out. Um, yeah. Lift that up. Lift that up. Lovely. Back. So this part's all bolted in and what I've also done is there's this uh, grub screw that's sticking out the back of the plunger. I've just drilled a hole into the back of the stock um, or butt or whatever you want to call it so that when that's in there and the trigger's actually hooked in, it, it's just got something to sit on so it's not, it's, uh, so it's not, um, yeah I just was worried that the trigger was going to push up too hard or something like that and then when you'd actually let go with under the spring tension it would just lift up or something stupid like that so it's what I was worried about but hopefully that's not going to do that. Right, super happy with this so far. Um, the next thing to do is the trigger. Now, my woodworking skills are awful and this stock is hideous, but I will maybe improve on it in the future. But 
just getting the concept together and making it work is what we want. So what we're gonna to need to do is make a little trigger for this now. And Uh, I knew this might happen, but um, uh, the stock <laughs> kind of broke whilst we were using it and um, I've decided that I need to remake it. I was going to remake it anyway, but um, I know there's loads of you at home going, A, your woodworking skills are primitive at the least and B, it was too skinny. So this is about 10mm thicker than this, 5mm thicker than this, about quarter of an inch thicker and um, it's the same material. I thought it was... Sapili again, it's not, it's Sequoia. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of it out and then I'm going to put a radius in this sharp bit here and do some other bits. Anyway, this is firewood and we're going to make this better because I've already measured it off. Okay, the performance of this with the two springs on is absolutely shocking. And <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not even gonna bother showing you it working with the two springs on. I'm gonna put four on. I'll lob a couple of ball bearings at a cardboard box and you can see how rubbish it is, uh, even with four on. Um, after I've done that, we'll talk about some of the modifications that I wanna to do to this and why I'd like to do the modifications. Um, and then, yeah. Basically, we'll go over it in a bit more detail and we can talk about how we can make this better in the comments.
when I decided to make this, I wasn't looking for performance. I was just looking to make a video that was a bit of a giggle and that we could make something that was going to be a little bit of fun that we could use just to plink ball bearings, or can cans of whatever, or shoot the odd cardboard target or something. I don't know. So the fact that it's not not very powerful isn't a big problem. However, I would like now to try and do something about that. So um, basically, I'm just gonna run over some of the things I think I'd like to change on it. So the first thing I would like to improve on in the next video is I would like to put two metal brackets either side here uh, and change the trigger so it's more like a crossbow trigger as opposed to this sort of, I don't know, what kind of rifle triggery nonsense. Um, and also make it so that it produces the back iron sight using that component, whether or not that's some sort of forge component or it's something that joins the two pieces together, I don't know yet, but that's what I'd like to do here. The other thing I would like to do is tidy up the front end a little bit, make it so that there is some sort of notch or some sort of locating device for each one of these springs so they can't move around too much. I'm gonna put a butt plate on the end here, not a butt plate or foot plate, something that I can put my foot under, hold the uh, spring bow in place and then use some sort of mechanism to load it. Now, after that, I think I'd be pretty much happy with the thing as it is and I don't think it would need very many more improvements after that. However, performance is lacking somewhat, so that's what I'd like to talk about next. So, performance. Um, I'm not 100% sure how to approach this next part, and this is why I'd like your help. I have got a couple of ideas of things that I think might help. Um, however, whether or not they are or are not going to work is um, debatable. I've never really fired a slingshot. I've never fired a crossbow and I've had limited use of a bow and arrow. I don't know what the draw weight of this is yet and I don't know what I should or should not be expecting from what I have made. I'm not expecting miracles. I'm not expecting to send this thing three, 400 yards. All I want to be able to do is pop it through a, I don't know, a bottle of water, plink a ball bearing through it. That would be nice. Um, but yeah, so my first thought is we either add more springs or get stronger springs and uh, make sure that whole area there is tidy. I'm also aware that the moving parts and the weight of the moving parts could potentially be causing uh, the energy loss. So um, changing the, um, or drilling out, making the actual, and piston lighter that's moving up and down in the cylinder could potentially solve some of our problems. However, I know we've got the energy there. I'm gonna take the nut off and I'm gonna show you what the nut looks like after, um, I don't know, however many uses. It's probably not even been drawn 100 times yet. I'll show you what the nut looks like. It's getting absolutely pounded to pieces. So, right, you're not on the tripod, so sorry. Okay, so I've stripped it all down. I haven't taken the plunger out yet, but if I pull that part out, the uh, piston, Lay that on there like that. Here's the nut. And if you look closely, look at that. It's absolutely smashing it to pieces. Yeah. So the power's there, I'm pretty sure. To do that, you'd need a reasonable amount of force. So I'm almost 100% sure we've got the power. But the other thing that I thought we could do if it doesn't involve lightening the moving parts is modifying the moving parts so that their tolerances are a lot higher. Currently there's quite a lot of play between the piston and the cylinder. Now I don't think that that should be an issue. However, by adding an O-ring and then lubricating the system ever so slightly, we might be able to make the piston and the cylinder fit a bit tighter together so that when they do travel up and down, uh, we're not getting like chattering. The other thing might be is to change the size of the ball bearing so it fits tighter. However, that would mean modifying the cylinder because, and well, probably modifying the whole thing because uh, the cylinder is currently at about 10.5 and the barrel, uh, sorry, the cylinder is about 10.5 and the piston is currently sitting somewhere around 10.2. It depends on where you measure it from. So an O-ring could solve that problem. Lastly, it might be an option to change the type of projectile, and I am not completely against that at all. Uh, we're 
I'd like to be able to shoot ball bearings with it. I think it's pretty low cost. I think it's pretty easy to get hold of the bloody things. Um, and if that's something that you wanted to do at home, that's a relatively easy thing to find as well as a home gamer. Um, but if we were to change it to some sort of bolt or dart or arrow of some description, I'm quite happy to do that as well, or give it a go at least. Um, this piece here could be interchangeable anyway, so why not um, have a go at doing those sorts of things? Um, and worst case scenario, if we had to put some sort of bow on the front, I'm not against that either. At some point in the not too distant future, I would like to attempt some crossbow projects. I think that what I'd like to do is to make um, like some of the very first crossbows and then from there modify components as we go along through history, I guess, and try and replicate some of the bows as they gradually progress through history to where we are today and potentially maybe make something very contemporary indeed. I've really enjoyed making this. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching me make it and hopefully some of the stuff I spoke about just now was interesting and it's got you thinking about some of the things that we could do to make this better. If you did have any thoughts, ideas or suggestions on ways that I can make this better, drop them down in the comments. If you didn't want to leave it in a comment and you wanted to contact me directly, you could DM me on my Instagram, that's in the description, or you could also send me an email. There is a link to my email in the description as well. And um, I will do my best to try and get back to people, um, but I will read the comments and then next episode, I will go over some of the ideas and suggestions that you guys and girls left. And remember, if you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like, subscribe, and, uh, if you are already a subscriber, why not ring that bell for notifications? It tells you every time I make a video. I try and make videos at least once a week. Sometimes I make a few more, sometimes I don't manage to do once a week. However, if you enjoyed it and you'd like to support me in other ways other than just subscribing, there's a few things you can do to help out. The first thing that you could do is uh, chuck a comment down below, even if it was just, I love the video or the video was awful, just chuck a comment down there because I really do appreciate hearing from people. Feedback makes the channel better. You could share this video on other platforms or with your friends and you could go over and check out my Instagram where I post regularly, I leave stories, I talk about all sorts of crazy things that I'm doing um, and I go through some of the scoops and early sneaky peeky stuff that's happening on the channel there. You send me an email or if you'd really, really like to support me, you could go over to my Etsy and buy some sort of blacksmithing paraphernalia or just buy some merch, everything from t-shirts to hammers over there and all in between stock and all sorts of crazy stuff. So uh, that is a great way you could support the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna leave a link up here to a video YouTube thinks is best for you. I'm gonna leave a link down here to another video uh, that was recently uploaded. This one here is a video I think you might like. It's probably the toilet hawk. And this one here is the subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining me. Goodbye, bye-bye.